Yeah. Hello, welcome you to the next session of uh, ML software testing. This is the unit three, the last session of uh, this unit uh, lecture six. So where we will go through some of the software uh, metrics and the tools, and the tools that are used. It's part of the static testing, and uh, this unit is about static analysis, code reviews, and metrics. And uh, we know that in the last session uh, we talked about uh, the metrics, uh, the importance of uh, the metrics. So, what is the basis on which we decide the metrics, especially for the software size? So, we know that uh, we are not deciding uh, the size by the code, not only the code, but uh, the complexity and structure of the code is also. Important. I mean, the program that is underneath the embed software. That's how we calculate the metrics. So basically, we metrics are required on a day-to-day -day basis, or week-on-week -week basis, or fortnightly basis, or based on the customer inputs. Is uh, to make sure that uh, how well we have done the program testing, how well we are on track, how well the program is progressing. Likewise. So we also have test metrics for life cycle analysis, communic, evaluating, reporting. So we basically identify, define, then uh, uh, we'll uh, communicate uh, the identified metrics how it should be entered, how it should be used. Then with the help of that, we will uh, evaluate after capturing the data, verifying the data, and the metrics calculated using some formula on the captured data. Then we will try to report it <coughs> effectively with the various formats, of, uh, either using the tool or with the help of uh, uh, any documentation that is useful for the stakeholders. Similarly, we will take the feedback from the stakeholders about the complete report of the test metrics. Then uh, we have studied about the software testing uh, matrix types, manual performance and automation testing metrics. So manual, uh, what we do is uh, test case productivity, execution productivity, defect, and uh, execution efficiency, severity. All these manual type of metrics we collect. In performance, in terms of uh, execution summary, scripting, and uh, that, especially the performance of the uh, whole environment and the technicality of the tested program will be reported. And some of the important uh, metrics also we have uh, studied, <coughs> like uh, test case productivity, so total number of uh, raw steps divided by the number of hours that took to develop that will give the steps per hour is what the test case productivity, that means this many steps can be developed per hour, so based on this, this will be used for estimation and the improvement over the period. Similarly, we have a defect acceptance in terms of how many defects are valid and what is the total number of defects, that gives the percentage of defect acceptance. Similarly, we have defect rejection, total number of defects that are rejected divided by total number of defects will give a percentage of the rejection ratio. Similarly, test case execution productivity, number of test cases executed divided by the execution efforts in terms of hours will give the productivity of the execution. So it is more productive if it is 100 percent. So it is based on hours, next one is the efficiency. So efficiency is basically an important metric to determine the efficiency of the testing team in identifying the defects and execution of the software testing. Then we came to defect severity index in terms of how severe the defects are. So this is calculated based on a formula 
uh, which is severity indexed into number of valid defects for that uh, severity we have a total number of valid defects that will give the severity index and that can be divided into two parts severity index uh, for all status defects severity defects uh, severity index for open status defects similarly the automation coverage in terms of uh, total number of uh, coverage percentage will report the if uh, example uh, there are 10 test cases that are automated out of 100 uh, tests then the coverage is 60 percent uh, sorry if it is 60 test cases are automatically automated automation uh, covered the total number of percentage um, is 60 percent. Then uh, there are two important uh, metrics uh, in terms of progress on the embed software testing or uh, schedule variance and uh, effort variance. So actual effort uh, minus estimated effort divided by estimated efforts into 100 is what effort variance. So this should not uh, be more than 5 percent usually in the embed industry variance should not be more than plus or minus 5 percent. If it is minus also it is not good, if it is plus also it is not good. At this we have uh, underestimated or we would have overestimated that shows the index basically on how well the estimation was done and how well the program coped up with those estimation. The next one is being uh, the schedule values here uh, uh, it is uh, for the duration actual number of days minus estimated number of days divided by estimated number of days into 100 is the percentage. So this also cannot be more than less or maybe 5 percent of variance because we cannot afford to have too much of a overrun it is called as a two important terms. schedule overrun that means if it is minus greater than minus 5 percent schedule underrun if it is less than 5 percent means schedule is so fast that it is well ahead of what is being estimated that is what it gives a indication. So that is what is about the schedule variance. Uh, we have the scope change. So scope change indicates how stable the system is and how much it has scope change from the original scope. The scope can be increased as well as decreased depending on the complexity of the project and the how well the program went ahead in terms of development and testing. <coughs> so that is what we have studied in. Lecture spy. So today we will continue on the uh, six, which details about uh, the metrics for automation, automation scripting productivity, automation test execution productivity, automation coverage, cost compression. All this will be automated. So that's sort of a thing we generate. This is typically based on some tools like Excel sheet or another tool. So we know that common metrics are used effect variance, schedule variance, scope changes. Okay, so basically for testing we need to deal with the facts in terms of managing what are the facts that we have considered for generating the test uh, matrix test matrix basically. So for uh, RBT, RBT is nothing but requirement uh, testing. So so we need to have a matrix so meticulously done in terms of reporting. For example, how many Requirements are completely tested without any failure. How many requirements have failures? How many requirements are untested? So these are very important metrics. 
it is not uh, just enough to report a pass fail count. Failure count, invalid count, not applicable count. There are different sorts of counts which are a result of either a re execution or fix in the software code or fix in the requirements. It is also important to highlight how many requirements in terms of what are the sort of requirements or the functionality that are. Executed without any failures. That's what this indicates. And similarly, how many requirements really have failures? That means, what is the functionality that is failing? That's what should be indicated using the matrix. And the other one is the uh, are the requirements being uh, Uncovered or untested is also another important element of the software matrix which needs to be factored. Basically, this will be a building, this will be a building block for the confidence in terms of how well, how solid the testing strategy is and how well the product is. Basically, both are complemented each other, and as a whole, we should be very well supported with this sort of a matrix. So how do we achieve the confidence is basically uh, before release the release the software to our customers we will build all these metrics in terms of reporting. So what are the fixes we have fixed, what are the issues we had and how well it programs. Basically he will ask actually how did you test, what is the strategy, what is the report that you have. All this will be Reported and coverage is also one of the metrics. So, coverage will cover the requirements as I said in terms of the failures, non failures, uncovered tests, etc. So, basically, more thoroughly tested products will have more confident outputs in terms of metrics. So, there is no surprise uh, at large, so definitely coverage is a uh, strict concept because it has multiple dimensions uh, including code coverage, design coverage, composition coverage all this test design techniques cover coverage also requirements coverage more like likewise we have many aspects factored for the Reporting. So basically, at the end of testing, we will report in terms of percentage. The goal is to achieve 100 percent testing requirements or 100 percent requirement coverage. And in the end, whatever the regression you do, there should not be any failures. So always the percentage should be. Decreasing that is what the aim of the matrix report while we are reporting at the end of our test, end of our testing, embedded software testing. Okay, so let us look at some of the examples and the various charts that the organization uses in terms of reporting the facts and the software matrix. <coughs> You can see an example uh, is basically being provided by X Black uh, Consulting Services. An example uh, taken so nicely it is presented uh, in terms of requirements uh, uh, in one column, and uh, the current progress it is showing in terms of coverage. It is this table talks about requirements coverage by area, currently untested, tested and failed, tested and passed. So altogether, the leftmost column should be 100 percent. That's what it aims for, right? Okay. So what are the types of requirements or categorization of the requirements that it looks for?
one is the functionality that means uh, requirements in terms of functionality how are they tested what are the failures what are the passes the next aspects are something like usability how useful the product is in terms of usability aspects then the reliability requirements then we have performance requirements then we have installability requirements so all this categorization of the requirements you cannot any more like uh, performance performance already there performance again you can sub categorize into timing speed memory likewise communication also one of the requirement uh, functionality or requirements category that you can have for all this you need to report on a total saying that how many are uh, currently being untested how many are failed how many are passed here in the first one you see functionality there are 7 percent of the total uh, number of uh, tests that are not being tested there is 93 percent that have been tested in that 3 percent are failed 90 percent is passed similarly the next one 25 percent untested 70 percent failed 50 percent passed so basically all the facts in terms of requirements it will bring out it's a very nice way of providing the report this way the matrix can be factored and presented so that the customer and the higher program management will be clear of what is going on in the software testing project it basically gives a trend Okay. Next one is again from the same website. Very interesting way of presenting the the representation in terms of it's called as a trend chart, also called as a burn down chart. That means how well the program is progressing, where it is going to end. So what is the trend? That is what is happening in terms of. Uh, various metrics that are going to be that are being captured during the test execution. This is reported using an Excel sheet, or there are several tools that also can be used for reporting the metrics. You can see, so it can be represented anyway. But uh, here, uh, example, uh, this figure uh, talks about. Uh, the bugs open and the resolution points how it is being trended for the particular duration. So we know that the that end date is here. How are we going to reach it by the current trend? So 9 5 2009 was the last date, and the program is being reported every week. Starting from 7:19, the program, the test program was started on 7:19, and till 8:30, August 30, uh, this was reported, and it was ending on 9:5. So you can see there are two colored uh, graphs or the dotted lines. The red one being total opened, bug opens opened. And the green being total resolved. That means how many bugs on the particular day are opened and how many bugs have been closed. See, finally, we should aim for the complete bugs closure. That means the green should meet the red. So that is what the trend should end with when we end the testing or end the program. So here there are total number of bugs. One hundred and ten total bugs are predicted. And start of the program, so there is a zero bug, and the next week, so we have about you have to put a cursor here and move on the right hand side. About thirty bugs are opened, out of which still it is zero. No resolution is there. All the bugs are still open, and 
during the second week we have about 50 bucks that are opened and at the same time there are about 10 or 15 bucks have been resolved. Similarly we have 1, 2, 3, 4th week about 70 bucks have been reported and about 60, 60 to 70, 50 to 60 bucks resolved. And in the fifth week, we see about 90, 90 to 90 bucks have been opened, and about 80 bucks have been, 70, 75 bucks have been closed or resolved. Those bucks are resolved. And in sixth week, we have about 110 bucks, and bucks are already opened. That means testing is done, but it's not fixed because not all the bucks have been resolved. So about 90 bucks are there still and in the end when we reach the milestone or the last day so we have 110 bucks that are being resolved. This is how the trend set, trend set or trend chart will be drawn. You can key in these details using an Excel sheet. Excel sheet we need a, a total number of open bucks, total number of resolved and we need a date and the upper limit of on the right hand side in terms of total number of bucks. So with the help of that Excel sheet there are formulas we can apply and draw the chart. Of course there are different types of charts it is up to the user or the test manager or the test lead how we can present it so that it is convincible to the customer and the higher program management. Okay. So this is a trend chart the first one the next one being the burn down chart that means this basically talks about the burn down of the program how I am going to meet on a given deadline. You can see an example here uh, take tasks as tests so there are say hours something like 250 hours are remaining and 25 tasks are to be executed how I am going to reach it so from the I will start from the left hand side with a total number of allocated hours and as I progress my hours are going to decrease accordingly the tasks also is expected to be reduced so that many tasks we have reached and when we are left with near 0 our task also should be reducing on the downside that is what this burn down chart will be prepared this also being developed using an excel sheet here you can see on the horizontal axis from day 0 to day 21 how the burn down chart is being projected in terms of day and on the column side we have two columns one remaining effort and on the right hand side we have the number of tasks remaining and completed tasks. So you can add as many as metrics into this so there are about three metrics you can see one being the green one which is nothing but the ideal burn down that means from the beginning how are you going to burn down towards the end that means how are we going to complete the program on 21st day what is the uh, ideal uh, burn down chart should look like and uh, this one uh, the orange uh, sort of a color is the completed tasks so on each given day or maybe alternate days or a week there are number of tasks that are going to be completed and that will be highlighted in this color. So all together those tasks should accumulate as 25 and the blue ones are remaining efforts that means we have a total allocated 250 hours and you can see the variation finally we are left with almost 0 it that should be done well before the day 21. And uh, light blue one is the remaining tasks 
so from the day one on the zero day we have all the tasks remaining and we have the full time available as we progress the task should reduce as well as the day or the remaining time will also getting reduced that's how the ideal burn down you can see uh, for example we take on day 8 so on day 0 250 hours are left and tasks remaining are about 25. So this is how we are going to develop the burn down chart and you see an example day 8 we have completed about how many uh, if I draw on the right hand side, one, two, three. So about three tasks plus we already completed on day five one task and day three one task. So three plus four plus five. So that means about five tasks have been completed on this date, day eight. So you can see the total number of tasks from 25 to 20 it has come down. Similarly, on day 15 suppose uh, so sorry okay on day 11 uh, 5 plus another 4 9 so total number of tasks should become about 9 so this is what you can see uh, 9 minus 25 about 15 tasks are remaining. So meanwhile <laughs> for executing or doing a task we have also consumed <laughs> Consumed some effort, right? So the effort also accordingly has come down. So remaining effort on each day and each reporting day, you can see it is getting reduced. It again depends on the resources, how much effort they have put, whether the resources are on vacation. And overall program, you can see the up and down are common, but at the end of the program, we should make sure that we are going to reach the tasks completed as well as the hours well within that the effort hours whatever we are going to consume should be well within the range here in this example we should not consume more than 250 hours and we should make sure that when we reach 21 days we are done with 25 tasks. So three parameters are important the duration the effort and the number of tasks with these three parameters we are going to report the burn down chart. So this is basically being done with the help of several tools or MPP or Microsoft project plan or Excel sheet. So developing that and going through the Excel sheet is not the scope of the embedded software testing but typically these parameters are used for reporting the metrics of sample burn down chart all you have to remember is two things we will report it for embedded software testing trend chart and burn down chart these are important metrics this will give a clear picture of where are we heading <coughs> okay the next one being uh, the metrics capture and tracking tool what are the tools in general they use as i said there are several tools exist in the embedded software industry uh, that could be excel sheet mpp or any other capturing and tracking tool uh, like uh, we have a rtrt which gives a percentage of how much your tests have been passed and failed we have ldra and uh, we have vector cast likewise there are many tools cantata like this let us look into some of the common web based tool uh, easy to use and maintain uh, in general they follow for the embedded applications uh, those two are uh, test link and bugzilla test link is for uh, test uh, defect sorry test management in terms of articulating uh, the test metrics and uh, bugzilla is used for defect tracking and defect management purposes. These two are these two tools are 
common tools uh, in ML applications and uh, any applications you take. But these tools are not for testing or test execution, but they use for capturing and reporting the matrix. Also for tracking. So test link is from a uh, sourceforge.net. You can go to that website. You can find out. You can download. You can use. Is an open source. So as long as you are not using for uh, commercial purpose, you are free to use that tool and download and use it. All test cases, uh, test strategy, execution details, all that you can put it. Of course, it has uh, uh, configurations, uh, configure internal configuration management. And you can use it for plugging into the external configuration also, and you can fine tune the tool as per your need. That is also one of the good feature of that. Maybe in the future session, if I permits, I will try to go through the sample test link and the bug tracking tool, Bugzilla. <coughs> so basically, it's a web-based test management tool. You need a server and all that if you want to. Install and use that uh, in house. We will try to see a, uh, the basics of uh, test link, how it will capture and uh, track. So, it is an illustration of uh, the test link. So, for a sample project, test project, uh, that is a basic component in the test link. So, test project will have uh, these many parts. Uh, uh, before that, uh, so definition of uh, the test link, what it says about uh, different things uh, that we need to use for the tool. Test case we need. So basically, test case describes a testing uh, task via steps. That means steps can be actions, scenario, and expected results will be part of that. So test cases are the fundamental piece of the test link. Test suit. Hello. So we need to have a test case. We need to have a test suit. I will put a. I will explain you in brief about each of this from the definition of the test link tool. Test test plan. Sorry. Test project and user. So these are basic elements of the testing tool, and so with that framework we are going to have it. So this framework we will start doing. So test case describes a test case through steps. Steps are actions and scenario. Test suit. So basically, test case suit organizes test cases to units. We will organize multiple test cases as a test suit. It structures such a specification into logical parts. The next one being the test plan. So, test plan is created when you would like to execute test cases. So, test plans can be made up of the test cases from the current project. Test plan includes builds, files, forms, and any of the binaries executable. Environment configured the items, all this can be part of the test plan. User assignments, test results, all be part of the test plan. The next one being the test project. Test project is something that will exist till the end in the test link. So, till the project is closed, the test project will be created in the test link. Test project will undergo many different versions throughout the Testing lifetime because we are going to configure and reconfigure again and again. As I said, it has an inbuilt version mechanism, so we can use that. Test project includes a test specification with the test cases, requirements, and all the all the keywords. Users within the project have different roles, so this framework will be assigned to different users. So users will have their own roles, and as per the role, 
they will keen use update and all that activities they do in the excel so that the matrix is collaborated all together so next one being the user what is the user so each test link user has a role that defines available test link features uh, the user can be administration or a normal user likewise depending on the role you will have a project team using the test link so this is a test link 1.6 example what is been told here so this from the source forge see test project has a test specification its requirements test plan and any other customized fields and reports on the other hand will be used and we can import and export the compatible elements into this framework depending on the type of import items or the we can we want to export the existing one we can do it then the users of this framework will be using the test link tool with this framework and he will play around all these elements like test specification requirements test plan custom fields and reports and he can also attach additional items like any scripts part of the test cases he can attach within that so all this will be part of the framework that will be used in the test link so that is the importance of matrix capturing tool and matrix tracking tool also this is basically used for test with test matrix test cases and test plan and reporting so the next one being a snapshot of what are the functionality that it has it's an illustration of the test link example so so what are the different roles and functions that the people they will use the test link as a core team so the users can be a guest user can be a test executor user can be an analyst user can be a test lead or a administrator so in the end of this complete test link project the administrator basically backs up the complete database of the test link also is responsible for creating this framework adding the rights to the users modifying the contents and managing the users so all this will be responsible uh, responsibilities of the administrator and test leader will define the test plan and he will add test suits to that test plan and he can create builds define the ownership define the priority all this will be part of the test leader and also he can uh, write uh, requirements or import requirements from the external uh, entity and uh, in parallel to test leader there is a test analyst who can also write and modify the requirements or import the requirements further he can assign test cases to requirements because test analyst and uh, test leads are very important uh, role people who can uh, decide what test cases need to be used for what sort of a requirements and test analyst also will help in terms of describing the test results and reporting it he is also responsible for test specification and assigning the keywords test analyst is also can be called as test case writer or test case developer test engineer it is up to you how you want to define in your project test executor is an independent person according to this you can have a same tester executing the tests so basically he will execute and describe the test results and the guest will have some sort of a read access who can browse test results and metrics he can basically analyze identify the complete project details so basically this guest can be customer or pm project manager or any other interface people such as qa quality assurance quality people qa also can be part of this test link depending on the project nature it can be done 
so administrator creates the test project test lead will uh, import the requirements from uh, any work document or uh, any tool produced output such as doors from IBM or uh, rectify and the tester uh, describes the test scenario and uh, context of the test cases and uh, with the help of a test specification and uh, he can also the test lead also can uh, create a regression testing aspects and the tester can uh, key in all the test cases and uh, test lead uh, will uh, create test plan and you can add build any script uh, execution mechanisms work instructions etc now the builders uh, have developed the build uh, the test lead will uh, add those build and the manager can have a guest role as well to see the results and test cases mapping also the another important aspect of this uh, thing is that traceability thing that is missing here it's a very 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 important term that is being used in the embedded software industry traceability from uh, design requirements is a must to be reported when we are done with the testing. So there are several steps that are involved for test link usage. Once all these details are keyed in, the execution is carried out and results are logged in and the project is being reported. That's how this tool test link is used. Okay. The next one being <coughs> Bugzilla. You can see an example. Sorry, this is test link only. Uh, the tool is snapshot. How it looks. Uh, you can see whatever we have seen uh, the roles in the previous uh, use case diagram or the functionality overview. Here you can see different uh, elements that are displayed here. On the left hand side, you can see the specification. The requirements, keywords, test project management, user administration, custom fields, etc. On the right hand side, you can see test execution, test plan contents, test plan management. Each one has its own folders, that folders can be customizable, and these are the basic framework elements that are part of the test link tool. So, upon login. These elements can be inspected, modified, or reported, or used. So here you can see uh, test link 1.7.4. One admin uh, has uh, logged in. He can uh, view this. He can see this and uh, add or delete whatever it is because he has the administrative activities. So the first step is already he has logged in and created the project. Uh, then the second step you can see the steps also been specified here as an example the step 2 will be test project management in terms of creating the test project editing deleting the test project as any the user roles step 3 is the specification all the test cases will be keyed in and addition printing all that will be done step 4 will have a requirements specification document assigning the requirements to the Test cases as step by step six will be keywords management in terms of traceability and all that. Step seven test plan management. So test project management is different than test plan management. Test plan is should be having the user roles and the environment and all that. How builds are managed. All this will be part of this. Step eight is test plan contents will be keyed in. Step 9 is a test cases execution, step 10 is a milestone management or build management or release management, 11 into 12 are executing and reporting the tests. So this is a simple a snapshot of a sample program used in a test link like this there are several tools and those tools can be used depending on the 
project and its complexity that is being applied. So accordingly the reports can be done. Okay, so the next one being sorry, it's not a defect, it is the test cases and test management. And the next one being the defect tracker or defect management. It is also important along with the test case of management to identify the defects, track the defects for closure and report the defects to the appropriate stakeholders. So that is why we use the metrics for capturing the defects and tracking the defects. So this is called defect management. Okay. So the test manager keeps track of following metrics as part of the defect tracker, number of open defects per severity category at all at a times number of solved defects in a period per severity category you know the severity of the defects depending on that he will assign the priority and he will report it and he will assign for the next fixes total number of raised defects number of retests per defects how many migration or retests re execution are done per defect to close it or report it total number of retests so all this will be part of the defect track so test manager basically keep track of this defect tracking okay so defect tracking is done with the help of several tools those tools are basically tied up with the test cases tool because primarily because it can be imported exported with the help of tools such as a test link and bugs are also can be reported accordingly. So the one a good tool this is also a open source tool that is called Bugzilla this can be referred and used from bugzilla.org this is also basically web based general purpose web tracker where you use a HTML or web based program to report update and generate the bugs and this has a server client link and all that so with the help of that web based application this report will be generated to capture the metrics so that is how bugzilla being used this is very similar to the test link so both can be used in conjunction to generate and report the testing metrics you can see an example of how beautifully the Uh, but Bugzilla is uh, nicely uh, nicely reporting tool. So the way that it is being used for capturing the metrics, and uh, it is also used for tracking on a day-to-day -day basis, or depending on the type of tracking and reporting mechanism. This is also a web-based general-purpose uh, bug tracker. So based on the HTML and uh, uh, the Apache server or whatever server they use. And uh, it's an open source tool. As long as the commercially it is not being used, it can be used as an open source. And uh, you can see in the next page a snapshot of a uh, Bugzilla tool. Uh, there are four windows that is been shown here on my website that I have uh, referred here. And uh, you can choose uh, the way how you want to report it. There is a. Uh, Type of image, how you want to report, window is there. Horizontal axis, what do you want to report? Vertical axis, what do you want to plot? A line chart being used. This day-to-day -day progress being used for reporting the number of bugs, which are in numbers on the left hand vertical axis. The same. Report is being displayed or reported with the help of a bar chart. You can see on each day how many bugs. So there is a uptrend. So on this day, you can see 110 bucks have been reported. On the next day, it is six. On the other day, it is 261. Likewise, similarly, the bugs can be reported using the pie chart. 
where you can see a pi symbol having a it's a slice of uh, resolved in uh, pink color and new new bugs in blue color reopened uh, bugs in yellow closed in green and uh, assigned verified all this can be uh, reported with the help of bugzilla tracking tool so this can be effectively used on a daily basis in terms of reporting so users are the test lead for the uh, the people who wants to report will collect the data from individuals or individuals also keen as a user in the bugzilla tool so that there is no manual intervention much required just they have to open the tool and the key in the data and the report will be generated automatically with couple of clicks so that is what is about the bugzilla so we with that we come to the end of our test metrics capturing <coughs> now we will go through some of the glossary that we were using so far or we are going to use it is again from the uh, software test book embed software test, testing book test book test set uh, collection of test cases test design technique a standardized uh, method of deriving test cases from a test cases test strategy we know that uh, description of the relative importance of the system parts and quality attributes leading to decisions about desired coverage techniques to be applied and resources have to be allocated test team is a group of people responsible for executing all the activities described in the test plan testing technique a standard description of how to execute a certain test activity test tool an automated aid that supports one or more test activities such as planning and control specific question build initial files and data test execution and test analysis test type a group of uh, test activities aimed at uh, checking the system on number of related quality characteristics test unit a set of processes transactions and functions which are tested collectively testability review the detailed evaluation of the testability of a test basis test type did we see this okay test type test unit testability we have seen we can see testing a process of planning preparation execution analysis aimed at establishing the quality level of a system test where all products produced as a result of a test project is test where unit testing testing of individual software components white box testing the test design techniques that derive test cases from internal properties of an object using knowledge of the internal structure of the object so with that we have completed a the unit 3 uh test matrix static analysis and code reviews we will uh, before we end i will just recap of this unit 3 uh, so what are the unit 3 items that we have covered so far so we have covered static testing this is definition static versus dynamic testing static analysis reviews inspection and the test processes control flow, control coupling and flow uh, data coupling control coupling is also nothing but a flow control flow control flow analysis then we had uh, gone through software complexity the formula uh, using the mckebe complexity mckebe software complexity and also we took a few examples and uh, with the help of uh, static analysis tool such as uh, understand for cc space or misra etc we generated a software complexity and the and the uh, static analysis uh, reporting parts then uh, we had uh, gone through some of the worst case uh, execution uh, analysis uh, aspects and the tools that are used uh, in terms of reporting the deficit worst case uh, execution time and we had seen a stack analysis stack overflow coding standards common uh, objectives guidelines reviews inspection process program inspection uh, program walk through and review process peer uh, 
the review processes what are the types of peer reviews offline work through inspection and uh, test metrics uh, we saw in uh, today's and yesterday's class life cycle metrics types what are the types of uh, different metric types and uh, metrics life cycle test metrics and uh, reporting it and uh, we also touch based uh, important metrics details test case productivity defect acceptance defect rejection test execution productivity test efficiency defect uh, severity index automation coverage effort variance schedule variance so these are some of the important metrics that we had uh, spoken so with that uh, we come to the end of all this thing. so we will start uh, the next unit which is nothing but the software integration in the next session